Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering all the Microsoft December 2020 updates. If you follow along on my channel here, you know that I did one last month. And just to reiterate, I am focusing these updates on the SMB space and the MSP space as well. So kind of eliminating all the noise from the enterprise licensing that comes out through these announcements and sifting in uh, to all of them because there's a lot to find out what's most important and impactful for this particular group in the sense of the MSP space. And from there, kind of identifying where we can become more proactive in updates that are actually affecting the end users and things that you would want to take action on from a communication standpoint. So before I get into the video here, so before I get into the video here, if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Getting into it here though, we're going to start with Microsoft Teams as it is the highest level of investment Microsoft's putting into changes right now due to the competition and the rise of remote work. The first one here I want to touch on is configuration changes and guest access for Teams. This one is more of a security concern for me right now just because up to this point in time, by default, guest access has been turned off and you need to go in and turn it on to actually configure this. And with this change on February 8th of 2021, it will be on by default. So if you've gone in and actually configured this setting versus what's set at default, meaning that you've turned it on or off, you don't really have to worry about this as much. If it's off, it's not gonna default back on. But if you are concerned with this guest access in the sense that a user can come in and add an outside member out of the organization and start collaborating with them and sharing corporate documents potentially if you don't have a DLP policy in place. This is a security concern and compliance concern as well that I would have. So I do recommend you go in and change that setting to off if you want to prefer to have no guest access available. The next one here, this is in market today. It's a pre-joined experience. This may be something that you already are familiar with and have seen. But it's basically just giving a better user experience to configuring all the video and audio settings before a user logs in and they can actually see their screen share and everything like that. So they don't have to join and then figure that all out um, afterwards while people are trying to talk to them. The other one here, it's a light one, but it's for PowerPoint presenting. So it gives the user who's presenting a better experience in that it shows the oncoming slides that are coming up as well as the notes all within the actual shared experience. Everyone else can actually just see the uh, presenter slide that they're on at that point in time. So just again, better user experience for giving presentations. And this one will be coming out in mid-January. The next one here is enhanced calling, Teams calling experience. This is basically taking the um, contacts, voicemail, and call history and putting it on a single pane of glass within Teams. So it's just basically making it a better, again, user experience and um, they're able to return a call within a, a single click versus having to move across different tabs as they do today. And this will be going out mid-January and ending in late January. The other one here that's coming out uh, for uh, Teams chat is related to dialing. And this is giving the user, as you see in the screenshot here, the ability to choose what number they're dialing from. This is kind of twofold, one of which is um, executive assistant purposes where they have access into other people's phone numbers um, and they can call on their behalf or take calls on their behalf. The other of which recently announced was the personal accounts that can be added into the team's environment. So you see down there in the bottom here, there's the corporate number with the 425 designation and there's the personal 206 number as well too. So they could dial out from either. You will be able to change these settings via PowerShell. So if there's something that you do want to configure, it will be available there for you. Um, and this will be coming out in mid-January mid as well, too. The other one here, we announced last month that the uh, recordings for Teams meeting are moving away from stream and into uh, personal users OneDrive, if it's something that they've conducted in a one-on-one -on -one chat, or into the SharePoint library associated with a particular Teams channel in which a recording took place. So with that, they are now extending the security permissions to replicate what is available today. If you're familiar with the uh, security permissions and documents and files when you look at OneDrive and SharePoint, into the stream recordings. And at the fundamental level, it's gonna be preventing people from actually downloading the recordings locally if they only have you only permissions. 
So I've created this as a, a document as well too, like I did last month, and I'll have this up on my SharePoint site and link below, which includes a link that shows you guys all of these permissions and the scenarios in which a user would only have you only and who can actually give rights then in that particular case. And hopefully that will help you increase your documentation and reduce help desk calls and things like that. This is going to begin in early February and go on through the end of April, so you have some time for this one. The other one that was announced here, it's coming out in late January, it's in early release right now, um, is this Meeting Reactions, and it's pretty straightforward if you're familiar with Meeting Reactions and live events and social uh, media like Facebook, for instance. It's the same scenario, but it does provide more engagement. It can be used you know, in, in all hands presentations or something like that where you want a little bit more participation in what's going on uh, and gets them more engaged into the actual presentation itself. The other one here that they announced is a new app called Approvals, and it's basically extending the Power Automate Flow approval work set into an app itself so you don't actually have to go into Flow and actually create this yourself. It can be used as an example for um, expense approvals, things like that. If you don't want to use a third party and don't have the money for a third party, it uh, allows the users to then have approvers for certain tasks or something like that and people can then go in as administrators or as the people who are owners of this approval workflow to then uh, create those approvals. So that'll be going out mid-January 21 and as an admin you'll need to go into the Teams Admin Center and make that a published application within their environment if you do want them to have access to this. The other one here is very basic. It's the ability to add a shared calendar to a Teams channel. So this doesn't exist before, um, but they can then now add a calendar to that particular team channel as a tab uh, within the team's environment, and this will be going out mid-January. Moving on to Outlook here, this is um, one announcement here that is applicable to end users where they can now add a team's meeting by default to all of their meetings that they generate. So basically within the thick client, when you go to create a meeting, just already having your meeting configuration, dial in number, everything like that on the actual invite itself versus having to click in and add that yourself manually. The unfortunate part is there's no group policy or anything like that you can use to turn the setting on. So it's something that the user has to go in and do, but maybe something that you want to create documentation on. So this will be coming out mid to late January and um, it will be in Outlook for Windows there, as it says. The other one here is these text predictions, which if you're familiar with Google and Gmail, that's something that's been out for many years now, but has recently been introduced into the Microsoft offering as well. So this will be coming out for the Windows client and also for iOS as well. So they'll have the ability to go ahead and have text predictions. You can turn this off um, if you did want to as well. Um, with a group policy setting in the sense of a you know, Windows client and that may be something that's user preference so they may be annoyed by the text predictions and, and the request that you turn it off. Again I'll have uh, links to how you do that within my documentation online so you can reference that. But this is going to be going out early January and late January for the current channel. This one's the big one uh, that I want to address here because it revolves around end of life uh, for certain services that could lead to disruption. So they basically announced that these older versions of the Office client um, here for Outlook is going to be basically deprecated in the sense of being able to connect to Microsoft 365 services. So all these ones that you see below here, you'll want to make sure they're updated. This isn't going to happen until November of next year, so you do have a lot of time. But I like to give these things out initially here sooner rather than later because it could take a while to go ahead and upgrade and have a game plan for upgrading these Outlook environments if you're not staying up to date with the current channels uh, for them. So make sure that you have all of these updated in the sense of your applications that are being pushed out to the end users because if you do not before this date, they will experience an interruption probably in their services. Last one here that I wanted to touch on is uh, related to Excel. So basically Microsoft is um, extending this AMSI integration in Office to include the runtime inspection of Excel macros as well. And while this is only applicable to the Enterprise channel, um, I did want to include it here even though I, I'm primarily focused on the SMB because I know there's a lot of MSPs out there that still service E3 licensing, 
which is applicable for this enterprise channel space. So the biggest thing here is that because it's including these Excel macros, it could cause the application just to shut down because there may be false positives that are created, which is why I think you want to be more proactive with this one and potentially move trusted documents into these locations that are linked here, which again are in my document, um, or at least communicate to end users. You know, you may experience this if you do open a support ticket, we'll take a look at it and do it on an ad hoc basis. But at least getting ahead of it here so that if there is false positives um, from something that it thinks is malicious, then you can actually um, just make sure that you're not getting flooded with a bunch of support tickets, things like that. So this is going out in February, and your last day to do this is January 31st before this actually takes effect. So just keep that in mind. But with that, this is all of the updates I wanted to cover in December. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.